Hello everyone and welcome to the 27th episode of Career Podcast. Today I'm joined with Caleb Arredondo. He's a concept artist mostly working on character design from USA, California. Um, give us a little introduction on how we got into visual arts and design. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. Um, one thing I like to do uh, when I talk about my life to people is I like to um, ingrain what I do as a career and like pitch an idea. So I'll kind of like pitch my story life. Um, at In fourth grade, I discovered that I wanted to do art and I was like, yes, like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And around sixth grade, I was super into video games and I was like, wow, like what if I were to do video game art? That would be so cool. Seventh grade rolled around and uh, my brother got me into World of Warcraft and I was like, wow, like World of Warcraft, that's so cool. Uh, I want to work at Blizzard. And then ninth grade rolled around, I discovered concept art by an artist named Fang Zhu. And after after ninth grade to graduation of high school, I just focused on uh, myself as an artist and grew into like, you know, getting over like the fuzzy feelings that most, you know, beginner artists get into, which is like doubt and art block and all that stuff like just get all of those you know you know uh jitters out and at the end of high school i discovered a school called brainstorm and uh it's a trade school over in burbank or was over in burbank before the whole pandemic and uh now it's online and i studied there for about three years and i'm still studying there and uh during that time uh i was taught by many popular teachers like Ahmed al Dori, John Park, um, Q Fang, who is now my uh, mentor, and uh, he he's got he's a uh, concept artist that works at Blizzard Entertainment on Overwatch, so he's been training me on like the whole role, and uh, many more teachers that have really uh, shaped my style and uh, got me to where I am now, which is you know being a concept artist, uh, working on you know games and stuff like that um and during that time uh last year i got um accepted at riot for their internship on valorant and that was an amazing experience and made me grow into a uh, better artist and met like so many great people and you know it was definitely a humbling experience all right and uh, were you originally studying art and design or you were pursuing another career path? Uh, originally just studying art and design. Um, from fourth grade onwards, it was nothing more, nothing less. You know, uh, recruiters at school or counselors at school were like, yo, I don't know if you want to do art. And, you know, that's, that's a pretty risky business. And I was like, no, I'm going to do this. And they're like, all right, you got a game plan? You got a school? And I was like, all right, this is the school. Like, And at the time, I didn't know what Brainstorm was when they asked those questions. So I just said Nomen. But uh, after I discovered Brainstorm, I just kind of used Nomen as like my you know senior project. And they were like, oh, wow, this is so cool. Like, yeah, we support you. And then uh, I just went to Brainstorm and saved myself like, you know, you know, 60K in debt. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, it's actually one of the most amazing things about the fields that uh, like art and design fields, like it's kind of in a sense similar to some coding and IT based like majors that in order to get the job, you don't necessarily need to have a bachelor's degree or any degree for that matter, because it's all in the end of the day skills. If you have it, you can show it, you know. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the most amazing things. And I think that's one of the reasons it's so attractive to some people that um, that you can basically make your own luck in a sense, you know? Like, there's mm-hmm. no workaround about, you know, not, like, you know, not having... Like, listen, if you have, like, the best degrees from the best universities ever in art and fine arts and everything, but if you can't, like, draw or, you know... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you actually have to, it's a craft in a sense, you know? Yeah. It is, definitely. not in a sense. It literally is. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's uh, an interesting point I wanted to, you know, just mention. Um, because it's always something that a lot of people, you know, it's a hot topic these days amongst like young generation and people when it comes to their future and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
like one of my best friends, like, you know, doesn't pursue or like, you know, working on his art because he says like, you know, there's no money in it and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I mean, I mean, of course, things are really like stuff depends on everyone's like environment mm-hmm. and you know life. So, you know, I'm not saying this as, you know, just take it with a grain of salt. That's all I'm saying. But in general, actually the industry is booming in a couple of years and there's going to be so many need for like our good artists you know oh it's it's already booming right now it's already it's, <laughs> yeah i would say the boom happened in 2000 like seven eight right when games started updating their graphics and things were being needed like r- yeah. around the time i discovered concept art is right around like 2012 to 14 when like kids my age were like barely like all like all my friends who are around my age they're like oh i didn't even know what you know concept art was i didn't even know what this was until like i got out of high school and i discovered like you know this and like i feel like youtube has made it very like more convenient to like discover this field in ways that it didn't but even before then when i went to brainstorm there was like students who are like champions now in the industry who you know were in the same boat that you know i was or i am right now where you know they're they're getting good and they're you know getting to where they're at and it's just this like ever going cycle of like it's just more and more people are kind of like figuring it out and finding out and what's great is developers and video games are acknowledging that like concept artists and 3d artists and all you know the people who make the art exist right like when there's a leak that comes out it's like oh concept art for insert triple a game right people are like oh wow and they get excited and they you know or they see like an illustration or promotional or they see like a leaked 3d model or something like that like they now know that you know fields like that exist because in like the industry or at least from the outside point of view if you ever look at like an illustration right it's too good to be real That's why, like, nobody ever thinks about, like, ever pursuing it. It's too good, right? You see, like, a league splash, and you're like, ah, that's, like, that's computer-generated. There's, like, no way an individual person or maybe, like, a group of people made that image. It's too good, right? But then you do your research, and you're like, wow, like, this is actually a whole team. Like, there was a person who designed that. There was a person who did a 3D model before it even got to the illustration phase. It's, like, this whole crazy you know, conglomerate of, you know, stuff going on. And it's like, it's super exciting um, being a part of that process um, and going forward. So I, I definitely feel like the, it's, it's definitely like, it, it will pick up more and more, the more like, you know, people, you know, are aware of it, but it's still, I would say, you know, the industry is still up there. All right. And, um, what is your main branch of design that you're focusing on? And tell us about your experience from the start, from the start of it that you started in it, and until now. Uh, my brain, my main branch of uh, design is mostly in characters. Um, starting off as a kid, I just did whatever, right? Didn't really care. Did environments, did characters, did props, like didn't didn't bother me too much on what I wanted to focus on. But right after I got out of high school. I focus mainly on characters, um, specifically for the fact that I enjoy doing characters. I always get excitement seeing characters. Um, and uh, growing up, like most of my inspiration came from just like characters in general, whether, you know, whether they did nothing or not. Like I would see concept art uh, done really well on like art station and you know, it'd be of a character who had this like crazy design going on. And I'll be like, wow, I would get excited. I, like, even if they didn't emote or anything, just the design itself looked cool. I'm like, wow, like first impressions, this is amazing. I'm excited. I'd like look at the picture like 30 times. Um, that's how I got uh, my mentor, Q Feng, because at Brainstorm, you know, he was teaching a class and I was like super inspired by his art. I was like, oh my goodness, like this guy is insane. Like what? And like at the time looking at his art and him getting hired, um or him being brought on to brainstorm to teach for like one class um he had just gotten hired at blizzard and so i'm like whoa dude like i look up to this guy and he's so amazing and now he's the teacher and i'm like whoa so character like you know especially you know his work and many others like 
you know, I get super inspired and that's like my main focus is just doing characters and giving that, you know, trying to feed off that inspiration to others that I feel towards, you know, my inspirations where that excitement, you're just like, whoa, this is so cool. And, you know, and you get to look at the little nitty gritties and the Easter eggs within the character itself. All right. That sounds awesome. Uh, could you please repeat the name of your mentor? Like Tu Fang? Sorry, I didn't quite. Q Fang. Q-I-U-F-A-N-G. Q-I-U-F-A-N-G. Oh, all right. I'll keep that in mind. And um, how does your design process usually go anytime you want to start working on a design project? Yeah. Um So my design process uh, usually stems from its purpose. Um, I always prefer to have a purpose in how I design a character or a project in general for portfolio's sake. Um, if I don't have a particular purpose, like I just feel like drawing a character, usually what I would do is like go to Pinterest, um, find like a particular fashion that I like, reference that a bit, you know, change up like, you know, some of the design elements on the, you know, the fashion statement, keep the pose and kind of, you know, illustrate a money shot of a character that could potentially like, I could break down into like orthographics, you know, um, color combinations, uh, movement studies, facial expressions, you know, just the thing that sells the character. Um, Cause that's usually what happens, you know, when uh, I was at Riot, is we would do a list of sketches and then there's always that like one one or two sketches that would really sell to the team like oh wow this could this could be a character like let's just roll with that and then just ideate and edit that character until like um it's done right um and so if i'm looking to work on a portfolio in particular um like i'm serious like i'm serious about making a huge project uh usually i'll just start off with sketches um If the purpose is to have a lot of sketches and explore the idea as best as I can, I'll do four to five pages. If it's not, it's the, there's a different purpose for the character. I'll do one or two pages of sketches, you know, consisting of like five or six sketches a page. Um, and then from there, uh, I'll clean it up, go from like, you know, you know, get this, get that sketch that I did, clean up the line work, get it into color, render it, get that presentable in its money shot, um, do some color combinations of like, oh, maybe this has, you know, different color in different areas. Um, get in orthographic going, so a front, back, and side. And then uh, if I really want to push it, do some like movement studies, um, which can really sell. Um, but for portfolio's sake, I, I really... Uh, love the idea and enjoy the idea that you as an artist uh, um, contributes to a team, right? So it's not just you as the artist, right? It's you, your team of other concept artists, an animator, 3D modeler, rigger, um, a, you know, VFX, you know, a sound guy, like you are really the inspiration for those guys and you have to lead them. So, Creating a project specifically tailored to each one of those guys is what really like sets forth like your understanding that of like a team and not just a one man army. All right, and um, actually, um, you mentioned that you were an intern on Valorant, and uh, let's. Uh, I had some questions about that. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, like it's a, it's not kind of art, art related, but who's your favorite character from the game? Uh, Viper. Ah, Viper, Viper is my main squeeze. Uh, when I, because I, I feel like for me, I enjoy like the the very dominant, powerful characters, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of them uh, had a very whimsical side, like Phoenix and Jet. Like they're very like uh, I always like I always like pictures like the Valorant cast of characters like um like college students right They're, they have a very college student vibe to oh, them yes exactly killjoy as well yeah like oh like you could see them in college like killjoy is the tech nerd that has a sassy like hipster attitude you get like phoenix who's like the cool guy you get jet yeah. who's like the sassy sportsman person and i feel like um 
Viper was kind of like the one that felt like an agent the most. Um, and True. that's not to say that that's a bad thing for the other, you know, other characters because they all have really great personalities. But for her, like she had this very dominant like personality of like power and like grit to her that I really enjoyed. And her, her themes as a Viper herself, like, you know, compliment her, like, you know, as a whole. And you also posted like a artwork like two hours ago on your Twitter. Is that also like an alternative skin for Viper? Uh, that's that's more of like an inspiration of Viper. Um, um. Uh, more more leaning towards like a uh, thematic of like an Egyptian like Viper um, that uh, was definitely inspired. Awesome. And uh, could you like uh, explain to us again how we got the opportunity to work as an intern in Valorant? I mean, sorry, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I told I told the team over at uh, Riot or over on Valorant, and they know this too. And I, I even said this during my interviews. And to most people, it's like, why would you even say that, right? Um, last year in 2019, uh, I looked at the Valor or the Riot internship, and before they had any specific roles, they just said, "Oh, just apply, and then we'll accept you, or or we won't." Right? So I was like, "Okay, whatever." Um, I applied, and I saw that they had Brainstorm at trade school um, in their list of schools that you could, you know, apply to. And I was like, "Oh shoot! Like that's that's an option. Like cool. I'm just applying. See what happens. Uh, if I get rejected, I, honestly, I." You know, I don't care, right? So um, I forget about that, right? This is like November, right? I forget about it. Like time goes on and I'm just chilling February morning and I get an email from a recruiter saying like, hey, you want to do an interview, you know, you know, Tuesday, and this was like Monday, they're like Tuesday afternoon at like two. I'm like, yo, like, yes. Like, and I honestly thought it was a joke. I was like, Oh, dude, am I getting scammed? Is this like, I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, I didn't think I was that good, right? Or I was good at all. And I was like, okay, cool. And, you know, the recruiter was running me through like, yeah, you know, uh, we we saw your artwork and we thought it was cool and all that stuff. And I asked him, I was like, which, which project did you like? Like, I don't, I have more of an Overwatch style, if anything. And they go, oh, uh, this this particular project you did of this girl, and it's on my art station. This girl with this like rocket like thing going on. It looks like Jinx, but like in the style we're kind of looking for for this new game that we're making that you saw in. It, I don't know if you saw, but you know, in our uh, anniversary, a ten year anniversary. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And so they saw that one project that literally like fit the bill. And then I was like, oh wow, that's great. So. I did, you know, an interview after that, you know, with a 3D artist on the team. And then uh, after that with a producer and then I think another one with a manager and then with the art director uh, or uh, associate art director, Josh Smith. And I told each and every one of them, and this is where it goes, you know, to like, why would you say that? I told them, I was like, I just applied to this job as a meme. I didn't think I'd get an interview. Like, I was just like, oh, okay, if I get it, if I don't, like, I don't. And they're like, (laughs) yeah, and I was like, I just, I I was just memeing. I was like, I didn't think I'd get this far. And then, and then, uh, funny enough, uh, I get the job. And they're like, I asked, you know, I asked uh, my art director, who was my mentor during the whole internship, I asked him, you know, after the internship, and I was like, what made you, what made you choose me out of all people? And he goes, Oh dude, he's like, is because you're the realest guy out of everybody we interviewed. Like it wasn't like it was a easy decision. Like, Oh, immediately we knew it was going to be you, but you weren't catering to us. You weren't doing all the things that we expect. Like most people who apply to riot do. Right. It's like you, you were honest with everything you said and you didn't hold anything back. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, that's like great to hear. Like, you know, I can apply that same logic to like most interviews, like just be myself more or less as cheesy as it sounds. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it went. Like most of the interviews, I gave my best answer and I was just pretty much honest and made sure that 
um, I followed their values just as much and our values aligned up like pretty much the same. Um, one thing that, uh, that my mentor helped me out, like Q Feng was also in the background, uh, giving me advice on like interviews and stuff like that. And, uh, he was saying, he's like, dude, just have your values line up with theirs and you should be good. And one of their values that lined up with mine is collaboration. Like I personally, the reason why I find the concept art, you know, industry so compelling is because you get to collaborate with so many people to like essentially play God, right? You, you create this character and then somebody comes in, gives their like two cents. They're like, Oh, what if it was like this? And they want up that idea and you get excited about that. And everybody gets excited about that. And then you push that idea forward, you're editing it. And then millions of people get to play that. And you're just like, dude, and you get to repeat that process over and over again. And you get to work with like amazing people. And so, um, they, they resonated with that and I resonated with them. Right. And so, yeah, it's, it's basically how, I, you know, I got the job. Awesome. And uh, did you, is there any content in the game of Valorant right now that you've worked on or you basically came up with the idea of? Yeah. Um, so uh, I worked on two characters on Valorant. One of them hasn't been announced yet and I can't say anything um, past that. But the one character I did get worked on that got announced was Yoru who I worked on mid-production of him. So when I got onto the team, um, Killjoy was getting finished. Uh, Sky was almost done. Like she was like right around like the 3D model stage. Like she was getting some things tweaked with her and her animations were, you know, getting roughed out. Like she was pretty much almost done. And then Yoru was at the end of his conceptual stage. And I was helping out like with some VFX ideas. And uh, the great thing about, you know, what Josh Smith said to me, he was like, hey, um, this, w- we uh, we don't have like a skin line thing going on. You're going to be working on like characters like on hand. So if you want to like learn anything or do anything, just let us know. And I was like, oh, dude, like one thing you guys do great at like Riot is like VFX. I would love to learn your guys' like VFX process and how you guys design that stuff. And he's like, yeah, dude. He's like, uh, you know, work on some like VFX for Yoru and, you know, we'll kind of just go from there. And so I, I did a couple of VFX um, for Yoru in terms of like design, not like literally like rigging and doing all that stuff. Um and uh after after that um they put me onto the second character and i got to do some uh, like early explorations for that character and it was a it was a pretty great experience so um yeah i got i got to do like i didn't get to do the whole process like the orthographics and all that stuff because that stuff's left to like seniors but they they gave me some like leg room to work around and like oh hey you know, you, you could do ideations for the next character, you know, you can do VFX, you can do like call outs, you can make props, stuff like that. Um, and kind of go from there. And I was like, Oh, wow. And so I took that like knowledge, you know, outside. And I was like, wow, like, you know, learning all this inside stuff on what it takes to make it like a character from start to finish, especially like on a hero shooter. All right. And uh, who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? Um, uh, the one you, you, you're you gonna, you're gonna hear about, you know, a lot is of course, Q Fang. He's like, you know, uh, my biggest inspiration, um, in terms of, uh, after that, uh, Sergey Brosa is another one. He's a artist that works, that has worked on Borderlands. Um, he, he has like an insane, like art style and like the whole Borderlands art style in general are you know, is something like I really aspire to. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> thinking, thinking about it. Uh, oh, Ben Zhang, who was an artist who worked previously on Overwatch and has since left, you know, Blizzard for about like a year or two. Um, I got to meet him in person. He was an amazing artist. Um, what do you call it? Uh, who else? There's a couple like TV Choi. I would say TV Choi. Um, 
is an artist that I aspire for her proportions and like anatomy and stuff like that, like uh, and her appeal to like design. Um, An Dang was uh, one of my coworkers on Valorant who was r- super inspiring. Like before I even got, like got onto the team, like I was looking at her Overwatch stuff prior to that, and I was like, "Yo, this is so cool! Like this is like you know the style." you know, that I need to reach and like the way she executes like materials and like hard surface in such an appealing fashion. Um, Ness Kane, uh, who's also like, you know, a great uh, illustrator in terms of like uh, pushing forms and shapes and giving great expression to characters um, in such a comic fashion. Um, And then a new artist that I had a, I was inspired by in the back of my head, but never really appreciated him until I got to meet him was uh, Constantine uh, Menstreco. Menstreco, I think that's how you say his last name. Um, and he was the senior at, uh, at Riot on Valorant. And his work is like draw, jaw dropping, like amazing. Like I can't, praise this man enough like i i had like a couple like you know side talks with him like you know kind of interviewed him a little and i was like as it when i was an intern and utilizing that whole like you know intern kind of thing and i was like yo like what is some work you worked on lee because he's been at like riot for like eight years or something like that and he showed me and he's posted none of this stuff on art station he's like oh you know i worked on this 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 and he's so humble in in the fact that all the stuff he does and his design sense is like what i've taken my characters to to this day and one thing he taught me while i was there and he's like just look for the small subtleties that people can pick up on like without you having to explain like your you know your whole process right to a person you should visually be able to communicate that through like small easter eggs right and so uh, a lot of his design language and he worked on killjoy like the the main design for killjoy and uh yoru is through him and you could see through his designs the small little easter eggs that like repeat throughout the design like um, with Killjoy, it's like the chicken thing. Like, if you ever look at Killjoy's design as a whole, like, she has a very, like, chicken motif that goes on and repeats. And it's, like, it's on her jacket, it's on her backpack, it's on her, like, turret, right? You see a little chicken. And funny story that he was telling me um, was that Killjoy, originally in Valorant, was, like, this mecha machine thing. And they, they they scrapped the idea, but the only thing that they kept from that idea was this tiny little chicken logo, like little cheeky logo that was then applied to the Killjoy you see today, right? And it was, it was just like really cool, um, like, you know, nod and uh, design sense that I, that I aspire to now in my art, like just creating a very balanced and minimalistic character with small design motifs that like uh represent and like transcend like the whole design and keep you looking and uh for uh the character that you had mentioned on my twitter um that represents like you know the viper kind of look um without me having to say like egyptian look you can already kind of like relatively pick up like oh this character is like you know might be like egyptian in some way because there's like small little nods and easter eggs that like tie back into the whole like thematic of what she is right and um same thing with like the snake thing uh could you repeat his name the the last uh, art that you mentioned uh constantine uh right. with a k uh right. menstraco I'll, I'll give you i'll send you a link uh to him but uh yeah he's he's an amazing artist that you know All right. i've recently like been all inspired by all right let's go to the next question um what is the main subject of your artworks and what made them interesting to you uh my main subject is um like modern sci-fi fantasy kind of thing so um, within the realms of like how uh, Overwatch 
and Valorant kind of do it, where there's like a modern take to um, a sci-fi genre, but with some thematics that are very fantasy. And I find that like super appealing because it like it's like a contrast to um, very fantasy things that I I personally enjoy because like I said like what got me inspired in the beginning was World of Warcraft, but um, what I love doing the most is like play FPS shooters that I was like oh dude like what would be cool if like you know there's something of that same vein right and there's like a meld together if it was like a warrior with like sci-fi elements but you feel the fantasy that you know transcends through it so that's that's a lot of the things that i you know kind of aspire to in in my appeal all right and uh, what technologies and softwares do you mostly use for your works i only use photoshop um and i use i utilize photoshop to it's like um decent potential um funny thing at right is they had a uh um they had a like they have small lessons between the artist and they uh like illustrators will you know you know set up like a google hangout for like an hour and they'll teach like other you know artists like concept artists environment artists and all that stuff like how to do particular things and right illustrators for splash artists utilize like you know the saying like oh humans only use like 10 percent of their brain right or some, yeah, yeah. some weird thing like that right like if photoshop was a splash artist's brain they would utilize 90 percent of it in such weird ways that like i didn't even think of using right and uh that's that's something that's like pretty crazy i only utilize maybe like 30 percent of it right at best but yeah yeah i know what you mean um, I actually started like digital painting like a couple of days ago for the first time. Mm-hmm. Because I'm just going through with a Udemy course. Um, <laughs> and I think like in the course, one of the things that the guy, the, t- the tutor said that you're just going to use like 10 to 15% of Photoshop, like for the next like 10 sections. Mm-hmm. And the whole course is like 18 sections. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's a lot to take in. <laughs> And um, next question is, any advice and tips for a good portfolio and resume for artists? Um, I would say uh, for resumes. <laughs> so, like I said, when I applied to, like, uh, right, uh, previously, I funny thing about being an artist is, like we said in the beginning, or like how you mentioned in the beginning, um, that you don't necessarily need like a super huge college education for all that stuff. And same kind of goes for resume, unless you're applying to a job, right? Uh, resumes don't have to be super like illustrious, crazy and all that stuff. If you have like an amazing resume, but your art doesn't meet the standards that they're looking for, they do not care. Like at all. The only thing their resume is going to like, you can, I'm not saying doing this, Right. Because then it like kind of looks kind of bad on you, but you could seriously just have like four, like, let's say you have five years of experience and all separated with different projects. Like you could just have your name, your number, your email, and then just a list of like projects you worked on. And that's about it. And you'd be kind of fine. Right. Um, But I would still like put effort into the like, you know, resume, like make sure it's like clean, you have like proper things, you know, fluff it up for the recruiters to make sure like you, you know, have like, you're you're competent in at least writing a resume. Um, But in terms of portfolio, um, I would say set your portfolio up with a purpose, right? Um, I said this in the beginning and it might be a little bit of a repeat, but setting it up with a purpose in mind to complement the whole team. Um, If you don't, 
what ends up happening and I find is usually your project becomes very your at least your portfolio becomes very stale after a while because like if you were like to go through like let's say a list of portfolios most people say like a golden ratio of how many projects you should have on let's say we'll say art station because that's what everybody uses but a good ratio is like 10 to 20 10 being the minimum 20 being the maximum right if you go past 20 then people are going to get a little sick and tired of looking at your stuff unless you're like an amazing illustrator that's been working in the industry for god knows how long and you're just posting up work right but within that kind of like guideline 15 is like a a good point if you can make it there, but you don't have to stress it. Um, and have each project be with a purpose in mind. So for example, you know, if you're doing like a character, right? Let's say all you do is character sketch and then like movement studies, right? And for the next 10 projects, it's a different character with different sketches and different movement studies. Then you as a person, on the other end is going to be like, okay, well, it's the same process over and over and over again. It doesn't really change up and you're not really specializing in something that would catch somebody's eye. Right. On the other hand, right. If you find a purpose for it, let's say one character is just the money shot character. And mostly these are what people mostly do like for illustrations or just like the money shot character is they'll do a really like they'll just do one shot of a character and that's it. Right. And they'll do like five of those. Right. Um, and that just shows like, Hey, you have like really good character design and that's as far as you need to go. Most people get hired based off that. Right. Um, but what that does is that doesn't tell like 3d modelers. That doesn't tell animators. That doesn't tell your team that you know how to properly do orthographics, movement studies, facial expression sketches. Like they don't know your process through just one character. So what you do is you do like one, one project is, um, you know, a, you know, character. And then, you know, below it is like your sketches, right? But you have like a ton of sketches. It shows your process. It shows like, oh, this is how you ID. This is where you started and this is where you ended. And this is the final project, right? That, that is a like list of things you can do. You don't have to do an orthographic. You don't have to do anything, right? Just shows your team of concept artists that you know how to ID and you know how to sketch, you know how to break it down, right? Um, and then you have another project, right? Which is the character money shot. You always need that, right? Character money shot. And then... Um, you go down and there's uh, an orthographic, right? And it shows your breakdown of the character, right? So let's say your character is, you know, it has a gun, right? And then it has this like illustrious backpack on top of it, right? Um, you show the front, you show the back, you show the side, you show the gun breakdown. Uh, does this gun have a special ability? Does this gun have anything of it? Show it in three quarters. You know, that that's for the 3D modeler to see to say, hey, like this guy knows how to like break stuff down. So we don't have any problems, right? And so on and so forth. You just go down the list. And then, you know, after that, after you've checked off all the things, then you can go back to, you know, sketching like one shot characters or whatever and have fun. But having that down and making sure you as an artist understand that you're not just a one man army really solidifies, you know, your place in the industry. Right. All right. And, um, what are you working on right now that you can tell us about? What kind of project is it? Of course, I mean, if it's something that there's an NDA involved and you can talk about, we can quickly skip this question. Um, but if, but if it's not, um, like at, you could at least tell us like what kind of project is it, you know? Um, currently I'm just, uh, I'm just building my portfolio at the moment, uh, at the, but besides that, uh, I have been in talks with, uh, Riot and Blizzard for potential, you know, opportunities, uh, going forward. But uh, I'm still waiting on that. And so there's not really much going on uh, at the moment. Anything too crazy? Okay. And uh, what area besides the area you're working on right now would you 
and be interested in to explore and learn in the future. Like what I mean by that, imagine um, right now you got a text that you got like a million dollar in your bank right now, right? Which makes mm-hmm. you, you know, worry, not to worry about like, you know, bills and stuff like that. And which gives you a lot of time. And that's free time that you have. What skill or craft or just anything? It, could, it doesn't have to even be art related or maybe a passion would you follow and continue? Um, it's weird, right? Uh, it's weird they mention that because I've been on this like, oh, like like once ah, once an opportunity once the opportunity hits, what am I going to do afterwards? And I've thought about a lot. You know, I've thought about this a lot. Um, I would I would look to dabble into cosplay. And that maybe like cosplay itself with like the whole photography thing. Cause like in high school, I used to like dress up for Halloween and stuff like that. And I found that kind of fun, like people's reactions. But I was thinking about like prop making in general, like 3D sculpting and making props for like cosplayers and stuff like that, like on the side. Uh, Cause that, that to me is like really like inspiring to see when like uh, I follow a lot of cosplayers who make like these illustrious like really cool props and like whoa dude like they made like you know tracer's gun or they made like you know reinhardt's hammer or they made you know stuff you know stuff of like you know video game media that i'm like wow dude that's like you know really cool and you know seems like a fun process to make messy but like a really fun process to make so basically in a sense like um it's funny that you mentioned that, but your whole, even you said like you're making cosplay props and cosplays in general. Um, it's basically what you're doing right now, but in real life, you know, you're yeah. drawing characters, but right now you can just, you know, make them real. In a yeah. sense. All right. With all that being said and done, to conclude all we discussed, give us a roadmap for someone who is zero in visual arts and wants to get to the place you are in terms of skill sets. Like, give us every step. Like, like give us a roadmap. Where to start? Best tools, softwares, anything that could come up your mind. Go. Yeah. Um, in terms of tools, uh, just remember that tools are just tools right? It's all dependent on how you use it, right? There's people who make more than enough money drawing traditionally, right? Because that's what they want to do. And there's no, there's no segregation. There's no gatekeeping. There's no nothing like you want to do that. You do that, right? Like have fun. Um, you just got to find a way to monetize it and, you know, go from there. Um, and Photoshop currently is an industry standard from what I know. Uh, other places, you know, allow like Clip Studio or um, some other programs as long as you can get the job done. But I think like in terms of like, you know, actual workspace, they just like give you Photoshop more than anything. Um, and in terms of a roadmap from going to zero to where I'm at or where, you know, at least somebody of a level of skill. Um, first, I think the most important thing is to start off having fun. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that really stumps people is the part that's most important because that part is the foundation to get you through all the, the headaches and all the stress and all the stuff. Like, for example, the, my morning routine when I wake up is, you know, I get up, I go make breakfast, I come to my, you know, desk and I open up Photoshop. Whether I'm going to use Photoshop is irrelevant. It's just up just in case, boom, I want to draw. And you know what? 10 times out of 10, I end up drawing, right? Um, because I've created an itch for myself that I need to at least draw sometime during the day if not every day. And if that's 15 minutes, if that's four hours, if that's even 12 hours, I got to draw at least some point because I find it fun and it's very enjoyable to me. And it's, it's the same example of like somebody who works out, right? For me, like, I'm like, oh, dude, I want to go, you know, everybody does this, right? Start of the year, they're like, oh, I want to go work out. I want to get my, you know, resolution body and all that stuff, right? And then they give up, right? It's not, 
it's not that like they gave up because it's too hard or they gave up because or whatever reason it's they went too hard into it and they had all this expectation and didn't find the fun in working out now if you go to a bodybuilder those guys yeah they have like some like worry about like their muscle mass deteriorating or whatever reason they're not gonna but they, they get an itch of like, oh my goodness, like I need to work out. I feel so weird just not working out today. Like I'm just going to go do that. I'm going to, I'm going to go do like 30 or like a hundred pull-ups right now, like, or something of that nature. Right. Or I'm going to go bench like, you know, five plates or, you know, whatever they're, you know, whatever they do. Right. So same thing goes for me. Like I have that itch and I've created that itch for myself where I have to draw every single day. The problem when you don't find the fun in the beginning is because it makes everything irrelevant afterwards because you're going to have a distaste for it later on, especially the worst points in your artist career because everybody's going to have those moments, right? The worst point in your artist career where somebody says no to you or you get a rejection or something happens of that nature, you're just like, yo, like, why am I even doing this? This isn't even fun anymore. Like, I'm just killing myself eight hours a day doing all this stuff, right? They're thinking too hard about the the thing that they're supposed to be doing, right? Like, that's that shouldn't be the problem. The problem should be, okay, I'm not good enough. Let's get back at it. Like, I right, let's 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 get going, right? You have that like entrepreneurial mentality. It's like, oh business failed let's get back at it let's do another one or let's you know let's go at it right so the first thing is have fun without a doubt if you can't have fun just stop stop there like literally just treat it as a hobby do it once like a blue moon stop there if you can't have fun with it just stop um if let's say you find fun in it you have that itch you want to pursue it more than ever after that uh you know uh Practice your foundation, practice, you know, your fundamentals, you know, anatomy, perspective, color theory, um, form, like everything that you need to know about your fundamentals, you know, you got to practice that regardless, like there's no hiding it. Like you can tell when somebody's like, oh, like I want to build this like portfolio for like Riot or Blizzard or Epic Games or, you know, Naughty Dog or whatever. And you look at their portfolio and it's like they can't draw, you know, a building in perspective to save their life, or they can't draw an anatomical character to save their life, right? It's like, that's a huge risk on the company. That's a huge risk on whoever's going to hire you. Like, they can't take that chance, right? They're not going to hand you out. You got to make sure that you have your fundies. I I call them fundies, but, you know, your fundamentals down um, and, uh, you know, kind of go from there. And then after you get your fundamentals down to, like, pretty solid degree, then you focus on design. Focus on like, you know, the important theories behind design, like big, medium, small, you know, referencing, um, you know, important things. Uh, You know, if you're an illustrator, right, you focus on like compositions and stuff like that, right? So, you know, uh, yeah, so it's, it's usually, you know, that kind of process. You have fun with it. Once you have fun, you create that discipline. From that discipline, you you know, practice your fundamentals. And then once you get your fundamentals to a good degree, you focus on design. And then after design, hopefully you just go on that grind and you just keep practicing all those things behind it until you land a job. And then even when you land a job, you're going to realize you're not the biggest fish in the tank, right? And you're going to have to keep practicing those, those uh, subset of rules because you're trying to catch up to your seniors. And then even when you're, you pass your seniors, you're going to find some, you know, you know, bigger fish, like a, like a whale in the industry. And you're going to be like, Oh dude, I'm going to be working with that guy. And it just like keeps going. There's always going to be a person better than you. And you just got to keep like, you know, chugging along. Right. But if, you know, if we're going to find anything that's more important in that whole process is just have fun. Because if you don't have fun, everything else is irrelevant. You're going to quit. You're going to be wasting your time. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty much it. And uh, I think I've mentioned this in, I mean, for for like the seven, eight people who were listening to the podcast, <laughs> um, I think that they've already heard that, that uh, I mentioned this before in a couple of other episodes that even let's say, for example, I give it like a 
pretty common example for myself, for example. In the past two sentences, I said example like six times, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so like in the spring of 2020, I decided to, all right, I'm just going to learn uh, front-end development. It's been something I wanted to like learn properly for years. And that could, you know, I'm, I like design and so I'll probably like it. And it will, it's one of the fastest ways for me to get a job somewhere in Europe and, you know, all that. Um, so the, so the problem was, <laughs> as you said, I liked the first step I didn't have from within and, uh, even though I could force myself and be disciplined, you know, to learn, learn it and learn it and all, and it's not that bad. But if you don't like something and are, and are not passionate about it, even let's say if you push yourself to the hardest and get that job finally, you're going you're going to be miserable because you're going to have to compete with people who are doing this for a hobby or you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. The competition yeah. will just and just don't do that to yourself. Just go through the to the thing that you love. Yeah, most definitely. I, I even had a teacher one time uh, who would come to class being like, oh, I, like I have this client and I don't like working with them and I'm only in it for the money. And like she seemed miserable doing it. I was like, yo, like like you, you practice so hard in this like industry, like at least have some fun with it. Right. And she's like out of it. She only did it for the money. And I was like, OK, well, like. You know, that's your thing. I'd imagine, like, they're still doing well. They're still doing what, you know, of course, they, like, you you devote way too much time to this career. I, I feel like it's the career you dedicate more time to than any other career, right? Um, and it's, like, something you have to, like, stick with. And you don't find out you're really invested into this career until, like, your fourth year in, right? Because the first, like, one to three years you're just like oh yeah, yeah like i kind of like this career and whatever and then like especially for most people that um go to college right like they get out of high school they don't know what like concept art is or they don't know what any type of like video game industry or movie industry like art is and they go oh you know they go to college they regret college and then they get out of college and then they find it and they're like oh man now i'm too late or or whatever it's like no you're not you're not late but just understand that like it's a it's a long haul you you are chugging through this you know and you got to find that fun right you don't it's you you won't find out until later and it's gonna suck all right thanks again for joining us um where can people reach you if they had a question or wanted to contact uh they can reach me on all my social medias uh usually just type in like caleb arredondo um and like you'll pretty much find me my character that i usually default to is like a character with white hair and a red sweater right so if you find that then that's pretty much me uh more than anything and yeah all right of course i'll post your social media links in the captions and i mean of course in the instagram posts i'm going to like tag you um so that's it thanks for joining us and have a good day everyone take care see you next episode bye Bye. thanks for having me bye